So this here is a stereo microscope and uh, what they do is, is they produce an upright image. They produce a stereoscopic image, a three-dimensional image, but also an upright image. And the reason is, is because um, in here you have uh, an optical system prisms uh, that flip the image around. Um, so the objective down here uh, produces an inverted image, which is then flipped uh, around here, uh, upright, and then it's further uh, magnified by the eyepieces. And uh, the question that I want to answer in this video is now is, is why do they use prisms and why don't they use mirrors? I want to explain how these uh, prisms are arranged to actually manage to flip the image around. Okay, so stay tuned and after the intro, let's get started. Okay, hi, hello and welcome, Microbe uh, Hunter here. Um, these uh, prisms here I got from bi uh, binoculars and the principle is, is the same, uh, but stereo microscopes, they depend uh, on these prisms because what they do is, is uh, they flip the image around. Um, the objective of the microscope down here produces an inverted image and the prisms, uh, there's a pair of prisms in each one of those uh, places here, um, they uh, flip the image around, so in other words, they turn it 180 degrees so that you get an upright image um, um, at the top here and the reason why this is uh, done is, is because you want to make sure that the specimen as you see it actually also uh, that you're going to manipulate that you dissect maybe it should have the same orientation as the way that you see it um, here these uh, compound microscopes they have an inverted image um, and even though there are prisms also in here these prisms do not flip the image around but rather they are there to simply divide the light beam it for two eyepieces uh, so that is uh, the function is a little bit different but that's okay because um, I won't be manipulating the specimen slide so much because I cannot see anyway what I've got on the specimen slide because it's so small and this is actually also something that happens inside our human eye when I see an object actually the cornea um, and also the lens of the eye they turn the image around and project an inverted image um, on the retina in my eye and then my brain flips it around again and uh, what I have done now is I've uh, placed also an arrow um, now on my lamp uh, behind the camera which you cannot see now so here it is Here's, here's the picture and then by using a magnifying glass like uh, this one here or or this one here it's it's possible um, to then uh, project uh, the image of uh, yeah I'm just gonna project it on my hand and you can see that the arrow is um, is upside down so um, and if I want to get a right set up image then I have to either use uh, a second lens system um, this was really the first attempt in stereo microscopy to turn it up uh, around again is to use uh, um, yeah uh, inverting uh, lenses again um, or to use uh, possibly mirrors um, and or to use prisms um, but ever since the, they have invented uh, stereo microscopes uh, they've been using um, uh, prisms because they have um, a whole range of significant um, advantages over mirrors um, and also over uh, yeah, lens systems. Well I'm now using a felt tip marker to trace out the light path uh, so the light enters on one side is then reflected uh, is a 45 uh, degree um, angle um, of the prism uh, reflects it 90 degrees and then back out again and this uh, flips the image from the left uh, to the right and uh, this is what we call a total internal reflection on two sides of the prism so the surface of the prism does not uh, contain any aluminum and this gray green stuff that is the glue that holds uh, the prism in place it's uh, important that the prism does not slip now I'm using a laser pointer to simply illustrate this and you can see that the laser light uh, enters uh, on one side and then is reflected uh, back on my finger um, on the other side um, and when I remove uh, the finger uh, then it is also you can see that how it's reflected also on the table um, yeah now you can actually see that there is a total reflection inside the prism now uh, for a Poro prism it's named uh, by Ignazio Poro who got uh, in 1854 the patent for this for this Poro prism system you need uh, two prisms okay and they are um, arranged in a 90 degree angle I'm now using this paper to illustrate this so the first prism lift, uh, flips the image from the left to the right uh, and uh, then the second uh, one uh, flips the image um, upside down and uh, by doing these two flips it's the same as simply rotating the image 180 degrees and I've now glued the prisms together uh, using some tape so it's easier for me simply to to handle this and what I want to do now is, is I want to use my piece of paper the yellow piece of paper now um, to illustrate this um, so we start off um, with uh, the 
point um, on with a dot um, on the right side um, and the arrow pointing upwards um, and this image uh, basically will be then flipped uh, upside down and will exit uh, in 180 degrees and I want to show this to you now. So um, it enters uh, with the arrow pointing upward and the dot on the right and it's reflected uh, by the first surface like this and it's reflected again and now you can see as it exits this first prism the dot is now on the left side um, and now um, because of the second prism the image is flipped um, upside down and you can see that uh, as it exits uh, it's basically the same um, yeah, the dot is on the same place as before with the only difference that it's now rotated 180 degrees. Um, so that is uh, the system that has been uh, used ever since. And uh, one of the advantages is, is, is that uh, compared to, to mirrors, um, prisms have a higher reflectivity. That means there's less light loss. Now, in my view, I think that is not a really big advantage because if you don't have enough light, you just turn off up the light a little bit more um, to compensate for the light loss. Uh, so that cannot be the main reason. But it's like this that uh, there are some other problems with the mirrors that I just uh, want uh, to talk about. Um, and uh, one of these uh, problems is, is that a mirror um, has a glass uh, here um, through which the light first has to pass through before it's uh, reflected uh, by, the, uh, by the aluminum, uh, yeah, which is on the back side here. Um, and uh, this means that uh, their light, which is reflected by the actual reflective surface, uh, by the actual mirror surface and, and the light which is also reflected by the top surface of the glass here. Um, yeah, there you have two reflections and uh, the light the rays are able to interfere with each other and uh, therefore they are able to yeah, cause diffraction patterns um, or also a lot of stray light which can also reduce the contrast. So um, yeah, essentially a mirror is not only one reflective surface but actually two. Um, so in order to show you this effect what I've done is, is I've got, a, over here it is, okay I've got a, a small uh, laser pointer and uh, when I shine the laser pointer um, on the um, mirror at a very shallow angle then you can actually see that there are diffraction patterns that form um, and uh, this is because uh, the light that bounces off uh, from the top surface of the mirror and the light that is reflected by the by the aluminum uh, yeah is basically the, these two light uh, beams are interfering with each other and they call create these patterns um, and that's of course something that you don't want okay now let's do another little experiment here I'm using a very shallow angle uh, to use the laser pointer to reflect it on the mirror surface and on the wall what I can see is, is not a clear dot but I can actually see that there are so-called diffraction lines on the bottom um, so the dot is not very sharp and clear anymore so you lose resolution this way this is because you've got light bouncing uh, back and forth also within the mirror because the mirror itself um, also has a few millimeters of thickness and um, the light can bounce back and forth between the surface um, yeah uh, the, the metal surface um, and also the front surface of the mirror uh, so you have a total reflection happening just like in a prism so that's a disadvantage and one way to solve this problem would be to actually not coat the back side of the mirror but to do that what you have in astronomy and when you make uh, your telescope mirrors what they do is, is to co they coat the front side of the glass um, with aluminum um, and uh, this uh, front side uh, then uh, basically directly reflects the light. Um, however, there is a problem beside manufacturing costs and so on. One of the problems is, is that this aluminum is, is of course uh, has to be protected because it li likes to react otherwise with uh, certain chemicals in the air, possibly also oxygen, maybe making aluminum oxide, um, but uh, that is again not so nice. So what you have to add a protective uh, coating um, um, on top of the yeah, mirror surface and this means that there are additional manufacturing steps involved and this can also yeah, uh, yeah, complicate the matters and make everything a little bit more expensive. Um, this is also yet another reason is that is, is the alignment um, of the mirrors because when you have uh, those prisms here and they're aligned like this uh, you need actually four small mirrors and they all have to be properly aligned and this is uh, already something that uh, yeah it has to be done very carefully and if you bump against the microscope and uh, the, the mirrors kind of slip out of alignment then you don't uh, get uh, yeah, a good picture anymore because you don't you see double you, you don't 
have uh, yeah one picture but actually you see two pictures this can actually ha still happen with the prisms by the way um, but uh, at least there are a few parts that have to be put into alignment and uh, so also binoculars if you bump your binocular against an object then it can be that these uh, parts that the prisms they slip a little bit and then you cannot get a, a proper picture anymore and you see two different uh, images yeah so these are basically some of the reasons why um, uh, why uh, prisms are still used or not still used or have always been used in in microscopy is, is because they simply have uh, significant advantages over mirrors and yeah that's why they're still around yeah so that is uh, basically all I wanted to yeah say today I hope uh, that you yeah it was interesting for you again uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you'd like to do also visit my Amazon shop my affiliate shop uh, if there's a link uh, below in the description and as always, uh, happy microbe hunting and uh, see you again next time. Bye-bye.